awesome chat here once again in the lounge at Work Hard Pittsburgh in the loungey, 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 lounge. I, I, I'm going to rename it. I'm telling you, I'm <laughs> trying to get this to catch on down here uh, with another great interview. We've got Anthony Studer here from uh, Deco Resources um, joining us today. And of course, please check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to this and the main awesome cast, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as uh, video versions on uh, YouTube and Facebook and all kinds of other things going on there. And great past interviews, future interviews. Uh, make sure you see what's awesome here in Pittsburgh and beyond as we're talking a lot of great companies, a lot of great uh, people doing awesome things um, in, in the space. So, Anthony, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about what, what uh, uh, Deco does. Yeah, so Deco uh, was created uh, about four years ago as a an experiment. What we wanted to do is we, we saw in the Pittsburgh community there there was no group helping people to integrate sustainable technology in a way that was very direct and guided. There were a lot of solutions out there. Um, most of them were nonprofit and they were kind of self-serve uh, where, where you kind of had to, you had to know what you were doing uh, to, to kind of get engaged. So we wanted to provide a service that was a little more guided and, and help people create solutions uh, around their problems that, that would be more sustainable and, and improve their sustainability for their their organization or company or whatnot. Awesome. I noticed like uh, uh, the, the rain barrels around around work hard here, and, and I've seen some some uh, some images of stuff you guys are doing out at, at Millvale and, and and places in the neighborhood even here. Uh, tell us about some of your projects. Like, how are you applying this? Yeah. So what we uh, what we started to do with the the rain barrels uh, was with a a group of neighborhoods north of the city, including Millville, uh, Etna, Sharpsburg, Aspenwall, Blonox, and then O'Hara Township. Uh, and what we were trying to do is to uh, provide rain barrels as a solution for stormwater management. So uh, capturing rainwater uh, and then providing that, that rainwater as a resource for the homeowners to water their uh, gardens, to clean, you know, wash their cars, things like that. Um, and so that was the initial idea uh, with that. And so we've been able to take a uh, per rain event about 3,000 gallons of water out of the out of the system um, each time it rains. And that that alleviates the the drainage system too, right? Exactly. So which I mean, we've seen them flood on the rough rain days. <laughs> yeah. So in, in addition to flooding, um, so every time it rains as little as a quarter of an inch, uh, it that rainwater floods our sewer system because they're tied together and the treatment plant can't handle it so they end up dumping stormwater mixed with raw sewage into our rivers oh geez so yeah it's huge issue um so we're we're literally just a drop in the bucket but that's a uh, kind of our start is to solve this problem through um, solutions that are community driven um, you know, all the people that, that got rain barrels, uh, they, they were discounted um, through a grant from the Heinz Foundation. But the, uh, the residents themselves came to us and said, I want this on my property. I want to be part of this, this solution. So um, that, that was uh, just a really successful program. We just installed the, the last rain barrel for that program um, yesterday. <laughs> so we, we've wrapped that up um, and we're going to look for new iterations that are going to build on that. That's awesome. I've seen like Millville a little bit, Allentown. Are you targeting like specific neighborhoods right now with your projects? Yeah, absolutely. So we're we're calling the um, the area of the Millvale uh, the River Towns because mm -hmm. those uh, there's a series of boroughs that are independent outside of the city, um, and they're they all have their own personality, um, and they're very integrated with the river, so uh, Allegheny River. So we're calling those the River Towns. Um, so we're focusing on that as one, and then the Hilltop, uh, which is of course Allentown. Knoxville, Beltuber, and then some other surrounding communities. Um, those are the two main areas we're, we're looking at uh, to focus uh, over the next year or so. Awesome. What else you guys got going on? Yeah, so we uh, are also doing a, a lot with lead right now, uh, which is a big hot button issue in the news. Um, so it's very difficult to get people uh, to become aware of, of these potential issues in, in our environment. Um, so we're, we're taking advantage of the news around it uh, and the excitement to get people engaged. Um, you know, it's it's something that, that a lot of people want to turn a blind eye to. They say, oh, well, well if there's lead in my home, uh, I just don't want to know about it because it, it's they, they don't see the problem. They, they don't, they're not seeing the, the effects right away. So it's very easy to ignore it. 
So uh, we're working with a number of partners, uh, including Grow Pittsburgh and the Allegheny County Conservation District um, in, in investigating uh, soil, so lead in soil, um, and then also looking for lead in water. So um, those are the two, two main things we're, we're looking at right now. Um, so we're, we're helping, uh, we're providing a assessment through testing um, in, in both the soil uh, for vacant lots or homes or gardens, um, and then drinking water. So those are the, the two areas that, that are the highest um, exposure to lead. So mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, we're working uh, very, very hard. Um, so we're actually um, focusing the soil testing right now in the Larimer neighborhood. Um, so that's, that's another area that we're working. What kind of got you into doing this line of work? Yeah, so I am, um, my background is water management. Um, okay. So I, I went to school for environmental uh, mm -hmm. studies and I focused on water. Um, my, my grandmother opened a, a laboratory in 1976, the first female owned laboratory in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, at the time, uh, she was testing coal. Um, so they, they, this was back when the coal industry was, was booming. And so they, they would analyze the coal and uh, it would determine how much the, the value of the coal was depending on what, what, uh, how, how pure it was. So when the coal indus industry collapsed, uh, the, the lab was about to collapse as well. Uh, and they, they realized, hey, we have this, this technology. Instead of looking at coal, we can look at soil and water uh, as well. So they, they started doing that um, at the lab. My dad joined, and, uh, and so I, I worked there for a while as well. Um, so that, that's kind of what got my start um, in, in the world of water, uh, and mainly focusing on water. Um, and so I, I never wanted to work in the lab. That's too repetitive for me. I, I've got to be out in the field. I've got to be talking to people, investigating problems, helping solve solve problems. That's really what I'm interested in. It's interesting because when we think, um, again, we talk about a lot of technology and things uh, on these shows. And we, we, I think initially I look at Work Hard Pittsburgh as kind of like a tech co-working incubatory startup-y thing, right? And, and you guys are tech, but not in the way that I think people a lot of times think about it. Exactly. Yeah, we, we get that a lot. Um, people say, oh, well, you're not a tech company. And so we absolutely are. <laughs> um, and so we're actually one uh, another project we're doing is we're partnering with MetaMesh, who you interviewed. Uh, and they're obviously tech. Um, so one of the things that they were looking to do is take their uh, their nodes, the the repeaters, uh, the pit mesh and take it out into the community. Uh, some places didn't have power. So we said, hey, we, we've got solar. We can power these things with solar, and uh, it, it took us um, almost a year to, to get the system configured right. Um, but we've got this this great uh, setup now that has uh, you know very small solar panels, so it's very it's not bulky, it's not expensive, it's very light, uh, and then it powers the nodes. So we uh, we have one of those. Uh, we actually have two of them operating in Millvale right now. Um, so we we're piping the the internet from uh, we have a workshop in in uh, Millvale, and we're we're taking the internet from there, repeating it to the first node, which is in a community garden, and so providing uh, free internet for the people in the garden. And then we're repeating it again on, uh, we have an aquaponics system. So uh, aquaponics is a, a combination of growing fish and then growing plants. And so uh, like hydroponics is using uh, water to grow plants, but you need to add chemicals. Aquaponics, uh, you use the waste from the fish to provide those nutrients, so you don't need to add chemicals. And uh, it happens to be a really good method for capturing stormwater as well. So uh, we are using the pit mesh as a, a way to provide uh, to access data on that system. So um, we're, we're providing free internet and, and collecting environmental data uh, on, on the system. And all just powered <laughs> off of the sun. Exactly. It's it's <laughs> completely. It's what what I think is really interesting. You know, the pit mesh is uh, wireless technology, but you always had to plug it in. So we, we were able to cut the cord and it's it's now pure off-grid wireless. So <laughs> Wow, that's awesome. And it makes sense because I mean, you, you drive down the highway and you see uh, uh, PennDOT's using uh, these panels to, to so they don't have to run line to mm -hmm. those little things that need to light up or give information or or the call boxes or something like that. Like I, I think that's great that it gets, gets used in this kind of way. So see, 
there is there is a a classic tech angle on this <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but it is technology it is science it is it is absolutely those things went, go into this uh, so so yeah i've seen i've seen the solar panel rigs uh, around work hard as well can you tell us a little more about uh, is there anything else other than the, with pit mesh that you're using those for yeah so um, the solar panel actually also powers our aquaponic system mm -hmm. um, so we can uh, Really, it powers the pump, uh, so we can. Uh, what we're looking to do is not only filter and treat the water. Um, that's kind of the purpose of the plants is they're they're collecting that the any nutrients or or even potentially um, you know contaminants that might be in the air, um, and and they're just managing them in a, in a more effective way that that would reduce exposure to to people. Um, but we're also looking to add these pumps to our rain barrels. Because uh, one of the challenges with a rain barrel is you only have gravity feed for your water. So, you know, if you've got your barrel, you you only have the height of the barrel to, to push that water out. But with a solar powered pump, you just flip a switch and now you can take water anywhere you want. So um, that's that's one of the things we're working on. That's great. That's great. Awesome. So anything else uh, coming up or that you've worked with that you're really excited about? Yeah. So we're we're kind of in the in the. Uh, planning phase. Um, so we've got a lot of new things. We're just trying to wrap it up uh, together and uh, and make sure that we have a cohesive plan moving forward. Um, you know, running a business is, uh, as you know, very difficult. There, mm -hmm. There's so many challenges in, uh, you know, just coordination and planning and things like that. So that's one of the things that we're working on right now uh, with New Sun Rising is uh, helping to put together a cohesive plan that uh, takes the work that we're doing and just make sure that it's effective, that you know, we're, we're communicating uh, with the community uh, and we're, we're solving problem, problems that the community wants us to solve. Because um, that's, that's kind of uh, the, the social angle that we're working on is you know, we want to hear what problems uh, are happening in the community uh, around blight, um, you know, urbanization, and, and finding environmental and sustainable solutions that, that will help address those issues. Awesome. If I'm a community that really wants to, to kind of touch base with you and see if we can get some of these uh, uh, movements in our, in our community, uh, how, how can people get a hold of you? Deco-resources.com, D-E-C-O, stands for Design, Engineering, Construction, and Operations. And uh, so Deco-resources.com is our website. That's the easiest way to, to get a hold of us. Um, we were on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, so we're traditional channels. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so go check it out. Um, they're really doing some awesome stuff in the uh, communities in and around Pittsburgh. You know, it's not just in city limits. Plenty to do around here in city limits, but there's, a, there's also a lot of people uh, need to be helped uh, outside as well. So thank you so much. Helping to take that tech out, out of the you know city proper and into the communities that, that may not have access to it. And exactly. that's you know, why we're aligned with uh, groups like MetaMesh, because um, that's exactly their mission. So. And Millville is one of those towns that... Um, has been on kind of the like the, the, I think there's there's a part of their story that's kind of similar to what's happening here in Allentown and, and a lot of these other kind of Pittsburgh neighborhoods right back on the rise right yeah um, they've had a lot of development there they had a lot of just kind of rejuvenation new, new sons are obviously located there so um, yeah it's it's there's a lot of uh, similarities and there's also a lot of differences um, both in topography and and uh, the makeup of the community um, so that, that's why we're focusing on both both neighborhoods uh, both communities uh, right now because of the similarities and the differences to, to get an understanding of of how how to address these issues across uh, a cross section of, of, of our community awesome go check them out um, there's a lot of stuff on their social media to see what, what kind of stuff they're into uh, and uh, contact them if you want to find out more information maybe help out your neighborhood a little bit too uh, again check out everything in this so many other uh, interviews over at awesomecast.net subscribe share this with everybody everybody just everybody just email everybody on your list completely uh, for these kinds of uh, stories and more uh, thank you to my awesome guest today you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.